A very very interesting question. Cost of goods sold are given as two lakh twenty thousand. Selling expenses twelve thousand. Office expenses eight thousand. Depreciation is six thousand and sales are given as three lakh twenty thousand. Okay, we have to find out the operating ratio. Now operating ratio, if you remember, the formula is COGS plus operating expenses minus operating incomes upon net sales. The sales are given as three lakh twenty thousand. Okay. COGS are also given as two lakh twenty thousand. A very very easy question. Operating expenses. What are the operating expenses? Selling expenses, yes. Office expenses, yes. Depreciation also is a part of operating expenses. So the answer is twenty six thousand here. So two twenty plus twenty six upon three twenty. The answer comes out to be seventy six point eight seven. That is our operating ratio. Return on investment measures a relationship between which of the following? Return on investment. Return on investment tells us the ratio of EBIT, if you remember, upon capital employed, net profit before interest and tax, and capital employed. So this is our answer. Not after, before, net profit before interest and tax, and total assets. Total assets are not employed, not in included here. It is capital employed. So the answer is A. Net profit before interest and tax are given as eighty thousand. Equity share capital is given as one lakh twenty thousand. Preference share capital is fifty thousand. Twelve percent debentures one lakh. You have to find out return on investment. So return on investment is EBIT upon capital employed. EBIT is net profit before interest and tax eighty thousand. Very easily given here. The second part is your capital employed. Equity share capital yes, it's going to be included as a part of capital employed. The second one we that we have is preference share capital worth fifty thousand. Yes, debentures they are long term uh, loans that the organisation has taken, so they are also going to be a part of capital employed. Reserves and surplus. Yes, they are also a part of shareholders funds. And tax rate. Tax rate does not matter here. So this is all that we have. So one twenty plus one one two one two three four lakh eight eighty thousand upon four lakh into hundred. The answer comes out to be twenty percent. So our return on investment is twenty percent. From the following information, cap calculate operating ratio. Net profit has been given as ninety four thousand. Goods are sold as cost at cost plus fifty percent, and we have to find out other things. So here we have to find out operating ratio, which is COGS plus operating expenses minus operating income. So what are operating expenses? First of all, let's have a look at them. Dividend received from investments; these are not operating expenses. Depreciation on fixed assets; these are operating expenses. Contribution: this is a charity, so this is also not a part of operating expenses or incomes. Loss on sale of fixed assets; not a part of operating expenses or incomes. Administration and selling expenses; yes, they are also operating expenses. So we have two operating expenses here that we have found out: fifteen thousand and fifty-six thousand. That is number one. Second is we have to find out the net profit is given as ninety four thousand. In ninety four thousand, when you add all kinds of operating and non operating, any kind of indirect expense, and when you deduct indirect incomes, then you arrive at gross profit. And we need to find out gross profit in order to calculate this. So the gross profit would be ninety four thousand, which is the net profit. You add back all the incomes that you have, which is fifteen thousand. All the expenses, sorry, fifteen thousand depreciation on fixed assets, plus ten thousand, which is your contribution, which is also an indirect expense. Loss on sale of fixed asset is also an indirect expense, so you add that also, and then you reduce the expenses that you have, which uh, incomes that you have, which are indirect in nature, and you reduce dividend received from investments, which are five thousand. So you add and reduce all these things in order to arrive at gross profit, which will be one lakh eighty thousand. So the gross profit is one lakh eighty thousand. We have found out the cost. The goods are sold at cost plus fifty percent, and we have found out that gross profit is this. So the goods are sold. So the cost of goods sold will be double of this, which will be three lakh sixty thousand. Very easy, because the goods are sold at cost plus fifty percent. So fifty percent of the cost is equal to one lakh eighty thousand. So the entire cost comes out to be three lakh sixty thousand. Now, using this, you can find out the net sale of the enterprise. Net sale would be cost of goods sold plus the profits, so it will be three lakh sixty thousand plus one lakh eighty thousand, which will give us five lakh forty thousand. So five lakh forty thousand is our denominator, that is net sales. 
and in the numerator we will have operating expenses and cogs cogs is 360000 what are the operating expenses 15000 depreciation what are the other operating expenses 56000 there are no operating incomes and therefore our answer comes out to be 4 lakh 31000 upon 5 lakh 40000 into 100 so the answer is a 79.81% the next question a very very good question a little difficult to solve the question is calculate the return on capital employed or return on investment from the following information we are given capital employed which is 1 lakh in the enterprise we are given operating profit on sales 6% and gross profit margin is 15% now gross profit if nothing is said is calculated on sales always so 15% is equal to 90000 that means 100% which will be sales comes out to be 6 lakh now return on investment is if you remember ebit upon capital employed okay we have to find out ebit and we have to find out capital employed capital employed is given to us as 1 lakh so we need to find out ebit somehow ebit is operating profit on sales gross profit is not equal to ebit gross profit minus all kinds of indirect expenses gives us ebit therefore ebit is operating profit on sales so 6% on 6 lakh which gives us 36000 so a return on investment comes out to be 36000 upon 1 lakh into 100 which is 36% so a return on investment is nothing but 36% a very easy question if you can understand and remember all the formulas connected here so this was all regarding profitability ratios with this lecture we are done with ratios uh, we are going to start with some more uh, aspects of uh, the practical portion of finance we are going to revise them and then we'll move forward with other areas